morning, everyone. Welcome to uh, River Park Church. We're glad you made it out this morning. Uh, if you would, stand with me. We're going to sing God of Wonders. And if you're looking for the lyrics, riverparkkc.com backslash today is where you'll find them. So uh, let's go ahead and worship God this morning. Lord of all creation, of water, earth, and sky, heavens are your tabernacle, glory to the Lord on high, God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy. Universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and Early in the morning, I will celebrate the light. When I stumble in the darkness, I will call your name by night. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy, holy. Universe declares your majesty. You are holy, holy, Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah to the Lord of heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Lord of heaven and earth, hallelujah, to the Lord of heaven and earth, hallelujah, to the Lord of heaven and earth. God of wonders beyond our galaxy, you are holy. Your Majesty, you are holy, holy, God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy, holy. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to River Park Church. My name is Stephen Daniel. If we've never met before, I'd love to meet with you after the service. Um, welcome here. We are in the middle of our Christmas series called The Characters of Christmas, and we'll be looking at some of the different characters that show up in the famous Christmas story. Um, but first, I just wanted to give you a couple of quick announcements. Uh, first off, we've uh, shifted some of our groups to online as we go through the holidays. We know people are going to be traveling and, and so um, there will be opportunities if you want to join a group on Monday nights and on Wednesday nights. You can check one out virtually. We'll have them probably using Google Meets. Uh, just come chat with me um, if you'd like to get information about that. Or you can drop a little note in the connections card that's on that same website um, so we can get you that information. Um, secondly, we do uh, have uh, op an opportunity for you to give and support River Park if, if you'd like to. Um, in the back there, there's a little metal box that you can do that, or you can give online, and that enables us to buy Parkville coffee, which we love, and have, <laughs> I save up uh, at least a cup of coffee every Sunday for that purpose. Um, so I'm going to invite my wife, Hannah, to come up and do the memory verse for the month of December. We've been doing a, a new memory verse each month. And uh, they come along with hand motions to help it become more easy for your kids to remember. Um, so Hannah, take it away.
kids. Woo. Okay, everyone stand up. Got to warm up our arms before we learn this new verse. All right, everyone, put your arms up. Two arms. I'm just holding a mic. Wiggle your fingers. Get your fingers all warmed up. Wiggle them in your ear. Wiggle them on your head. Slap like a chicken. Okay, you think your arms are ready? No, all right, well, <laughs> you can keep on flapping like a chicken for a while. Um, okay, so I'll, we're, this is our brand new verse. We're gonna be learning it this month. So I'll do it little bit by little bit, and you guys can repeat after me. And then we'll see if we can go all the way through. If you can't, that's fine. Just follow along. <laughs> all right, so repeat after me. 2 Timothy 1, 7 and 8. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power and love and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. All right. You think you can do that with me all the way through? <laughs> we'll have lots more chances in the coming weeks. Titus, do you want to come do this with me since I only have one free arm? Okay. He is going to do it with two arms the way you're supposed to do it. <laughs> all right. Let's all say it together. We'll go slowly, okay? 2 Timothy 1, 7 and 8. For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity, but of power, love, and self-discipline. So never be ashamed to tell others about our Lord. All right, guys, and we'll be sending out the email later with um, the video so you can practice it at home, too. I just wanted to read to you a verse that sort of summarizes some of the, the purpose behind this Christmas season. Um, it's just one pretty short verse, and then we'll jump back into our worship time. It's from the book of 1 John chapter 4, verse 9. It says, In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that He has loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sin. That's a, a big, long, churchy word, but it, it's just basically the payment. He's been the, the payment for our sin. So that's, that's uh, ultimately the, the purpose, the reason behind why Jesus came. And we'll talk a lot more about that in coming weeks. So I just want to invite you to join us as we continue with our worship time. All right. Thank you, Stephen and Hannah. Uh, why don't you stand with me? We're going to do Silent Night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm. so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. Silent night, holy night, shed quake at the sight glory stream from heaven afar heavenly host sing alleluia Christ the Savior is born Christ the Savior is born
silent night, holy night, Son of God loves your light, radiant beams from thy holy face, with the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus Lord at thy birth, Jesus Lord at thy birth. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. You may be seated. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome. And for those of you who are joining us here, as well as those who have joined us on live stream, I'm so happy that uh, you're here with us today. And as I mentioned during the announcements, we're jumping into a series on the characters of Christmas. And, you know, this season is one that we're anticipating. We're anticipating this, this big day that comes on the 25th of December. And uh, some of us have, have probably heard the Christmas story lots of different times in a lot of different ways. Maybe it's from the Charlie Brown Christmas episode, and that's like the, the, your, the entirety of your understanding of the story. Or maybe it's from sitting in a church service and all the kids crowd around somebody on the stage and hear the story of Christmas. But we're going to take a little bit deeper look at some of the key characters that show up in the Christmas story. And uh, one of God's M.O.'s. One of his, his things that he just seems to do a lot in Scripture is that he takes ordinary people and does amazing things through them. But if you look at some of the ordinary people that show up in the Christmas story, you, you kind of find a theme, a pattern that shows up in their lives. And that pattern is that they view themselves as God's servants. And we just find that when people do that, amazing things happen. And, and I'm going to just kind of give you a, a peek behind the curtain here but on one of my hopes and prayers for you as we go through this series on characters of Christmas. And my prayer is that you will get some new heroes, some heroes that are real. Because, you know, Marvel, DC, cranking out all these, these hero movies left and right, um, we have all kinds of heroes, but none of them are real. They're all fake. And if you enter into a situation and think, what would Thor do? It's not going to go well for you. <laughs> you can't just hit everything with a hammer. And these are real people. The people in the story of Christmas are actual historical people that existed. They had challenges in their life, crazy challenges. Uh, often it's the, times, the types of things we experience in our own life just to the extreme. And they consistently walk through these things faithfully and with a trust in God. And then you get to see what happens. You get to see the outcome. And the same God that walked them through those situations 2,000 years ago is the God that we have today. That's why I think it's so important. That's why I want to set some of these people up as heroes. Because if you enter into a situation and you, you identify, hey, this is similar to what Joseph went through or Mary went through? How did they handle it and what was the result? This can actually be very beneficial for us, um, but also I think it can be very honoring to God. That's why we're doing the series this way. You know, there's actually examples in Scripture as well of people who do the opposite. Um, stories of Jonah and, and Jonah and the whale, right? He, he was given a mission by God and he turned and ran the other direction and we see how that ended up. He spent three days in the belly of a fish. 
King Saul, who was not patient on God's timing, he took timing into his own hands and he got the kingdom stripped from him. King David, who decided to take what he wanted even when it wasn't right, and the punishment trickled down through his entire family line. So we can learn from these people um, how we can walk with God faithfully and we can anticipate the blessing that comes from that. Last week we looked at Mary. We saw how she uh, acted as a servant of God. She was given this crazy mission. You're going to have a baby and it's going to be the Son of God. And wow, it's a crazy mission. And she responds humbly as God's servant, knowing it was going to come at a great personal cost. Yet she feared God rather than man. She trusted that God would not rip her off, and he didn't. And this allowed her to walk through the challenge with great joy. She even made a song about it. Today we're going to turn our sights toward Joseph. Now there's a lot less written about Joseph in Scripture than there even is about Mary. Um, So we're going to look at one of the small passages in Scripture that Tell us who he was. And I think with Joseph, and in most of the tellings of the Christmas story, he's kind of on the periphery. He's out, outside, and you can easily filter through Joseph. And so we're going to take a little pause and, and see what we can learn about him. And if you don't have a, a Bible or a Bible app, uh, you can check out these verses on the riverparkkc.com slash today. And this morning we're going to turn to Matthew chapter 1 starting in verse 18. And we're just going to read a few verses and pause and look at what we read, and then we're going to um, keep on going. So Matthew 1, verse 18, starts with this. The birth of Jesus Christ came about this way. After his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, his being Jesus, after Jesus' mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered before they came together that she was pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Okay, so just a few things we learned from that one verse. Uh, Engaged. Joseph and Mary were engaged. Back then, in that time, most likely this was an arranged marriage. We don't know that for sure, but that that was a custom. Uh, Also, engagement held the same power as marriage. The difference was they just had not come together yet. They didn't live together. And so you can't just walk away from this kind of engagement. To break it off is actually divorce. Um, this also tells us some things about Jesus because we're, we're hearing his origin story, right? He was, he was birthed from a mother, a human mother. So that tells us that Jesus was fully man. He could actually experience hunger and thirst and cold and tired because he was born from a woman. But also, he was fully God. He was put there within Mary by God himself. And so he was the only man capable of pulling off the mission he had assigned to him, which was to live a perfect, flawless, sinless life, be the only human in the history of existence not deserving of punishment for their own sins, yet to give it anyways, to give up his life for the payment for ours, like we read just a moment ago. And whether Mary knew it or not, or or Joseph knew it or not, Jesus was going to be this, this God-man that we needed for our redemption to God. Now, a couple of things that it's easy to just skim over in this verse. It was discovered before they came together. So we don't know how that happened. We know from the, the uh, story from last week, Mary found out she was going to have a baby. She went and spent three months with her cousin Elizabeth. And so by this time, it's most likely she was starting to show a little bit. And word could have gotten around from, from her time with Elizabeth, but she could have also just come to Joseph and told him, hey, I'm pregnant, and it's from the Holy Spirit, I promise. And <laughs> we, before they came together. So, okay, just, just consider the history of all mankind up until this point. You know, if Joseph, maybe he loved her, maybe she was totally worthy of trust, but Every single person in the history of mankind up until this point has been born because of two people being involved, a man and a woman. And so when Mary, if she told him, hey, this was from the Holy Spirit, no sane person would have a reason to believe that. 
And it says in a moment he was a righteous man, but, and we know Mary was a, a pretty honorable woman based upon what we know about her, but still, it's just too far outside of the realm of possibility. So let's see what kind of man Joseph is in verse 19. So her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. So we don't know how long he stayed in this state. We don't know the time between when he found out she was pregnant and he was visited by an angel in a dream. We at least know there was a period of a few hours because there was the time when he was awake thinking about it and then at some point he was asleep. So that time in between, it could have been days or weeks, we don't know. But I think there's something to glean, or, and this is actually one of the reasons I would call Joseph a hero, is what he did in this time between. This time when, in his mind, he has just been betrayed. The man has been betrayed in his mind. And what he does and doesn't do, I think, are very instructive for us. The scripture here calls him a righteous man. Other translations say just. So this doesn't mean he's just going to ignore it. It's not just going to say, oh, you just, you betrayed me? Well, that's that's all right. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about it. He didn't do that. He's righteous and just. There are certain things that for it to be just, there, there should be some kind of recourse for that type of betrayal. But rather than, than getting even, he does something very different here. And really, in, in their culture, there was two options at this point. Um, this is a shame and honor society that they live in. Everybody knows everybody. All the dirt, it gets uncovered. And so, really, the option was for this shame, this disgrace that has occurred to all be placed on Mary or for it to be shared. (laughs) That's really the two options that Joseph was faced with. He could just, he could throw her out, publicly say, this woman has betrayed me. And we know that in some times in that space, in that time, the result would have been stoning for the woman. She could have been killed. Um, Jesus, 30-something years later, saves a woman from that. He, He stops people from stoning her for that same type of action. So the options, again, Joseph could have done that. He could have basically wiped his hands of her and put all of the shame on her. The other option, and the option that Joseph took, was one of shared shame. See, he, he, he was planning, rather than disgracing her publicly, he decided, I'm going to divorce her secretly. And see, again, everybody knows everybody. And so they will know that at one point they were... They were engaged. Nine months later, there's a baby. They're no longer engaged. People are going to assume something had happened between Mary and Joseph, and Joseph threw her to the curb. So it's, it's pretty evident that you know, jo- Joseph would have known the, the type of lifelong consequences that would come from not shaming Mary publicly. Yet he did it. He actually took that burden on himself because he loved her. He wanted to show her mercy when he thought he had just been betrayed by her. Now, why, why am I calling Joseph a hero here? Um, I mean, mo- Lord willing, none of you will ever deal with that type of betrayal. Um, but it doesn't take much for us to feel the need to get even, does it? Doesn't even doesn't take any kind of betrayal near that size, and we can really all it takes is somebody to tick us off. You know, do something that we perceive to be unfair, or do something that we just didn't want them to do. Maybe somebody blocks us from getting what we want, and immediately there's this gut reaction to just let's get even, whether it be through our words, through our actions. There's all kinds of ways we can take to to play this game. Uh, of getting back at the person who has either betrayed or offended or just blocked us from getting what we want. I think, I just think what Joseph did here was the ultimate manliness. Like he, he just bore that burden on himself because he loved Mary and he wanted to show her mercy. 
Now let's see what happens next. After he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what's been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you're to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Now all this took place to fulfill what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet. And here's the the quote from the prophet Isaiah in chapter 7 of the book of Isaiah. It says, See, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son. They will name him Emmanuel, which translated is God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did as the Lord commanded him. And he he married her. Uh, One thing I want to point out, uh, Joseph, son of David. There's only one other time in the New Testament where somebody from that era is called son of David, and that is Jesus himself. Um, Joseph was in the line of David, King David. And, you know, this this quote from Isaiah is is just another... uh, It's another testimony to just the consistency of Scripture. Isaiah was a prophet of God hundreds of years before this time of Mary and Joseph. And just you read what he said. See, the virgin will become pregnant and and give birth to a son. That's amazing. Hundreds of years before, God had said, this is what I'm going to do. And then he does it through Mary and Joseph. I mentioned... You know, the first reason I see Joseph worthy of uh, being a hero and getting that hero status from us today. One, he he was willing to endure shame upon himself so that he could do good to this woman, Mary, his perceived betrayer at the time. The second reason, though, is Joseph's response to this call from God. It was exact, immediate obedience to the, the call of God. When you read that, you know, first, you know, I'm trying to be in the place of, day, of uh, Joseph when he's, he's in this situation. He has this dream. Imagine the initial relief, right? You just thought this woman that you loved had betrayed you, and then you get this dream from an angel. Don't be afraid. She's telling the truth. I would envision quite a bit of relief there. She didn't betray me. And then this flood of what and fear and terror and maybe excitement of this mission he was being given that you're going to be the adopted father of the son of god and actually you get the role of naming this little boy wow see on on the surface it looks like man everything's going to be good for joseph now right this angel told him Hey, she wasn't telling a lie. This is true. But all of those things I mentioned earlier about the shame and honor society, they still stick. They're still there. Everybody knows they're not married yet. People can count months. The baby's going to show up, and the math's not going to add up. So whether or not Mary was telling the truth, Joseph and Mary are still going to walk through life in this community as second-class citizens. That's just part of the culture that they were in. But he trusted God. He knew God is not going to rip me off. He just obeyed God and did what was right in that time. He did exactly what he was told. And it's actually a good thing. He was building that pattern because throughout their marriage and the early years of Jesus, the same thing happened multiple times. He'd get a dream and said, train, wait for a moment. That was quick. He would get a dream that would say, Joseph, pick up your family and move, quick. Somebody's going to come after the baby, and he does. And then he gets another dream that tells him to go somewhere else. It's just, it's this pattern that you see in Joseph's life of exact, immediate obedience. And now you get to see 2,000 years later, looking back on their life, the reputation and the honor that is shown to Mary and Joseph as the parents of Jesus. See, this is my, my hope for you, as I mentioned earlier. My prayer is that as, as you're walking through your week, through your month, through your year, you'll start to establish these new heroes, people who are real, people who've really gone through challenges in life similar to what you'll deal with, 
and people who have stayed faithful to God. You see, one of the most uh, the tricky tactics of the enemy, and we do have a real spiritual enemy, is to convince you that you're the only one. You're the only one that will ever have to endure this type of injustice, this unfairness, having to endure not getting what you want. Because if you're the only one, then sure, you're justified in, in doing whatever you want as a result. That's one of the tactics of the enemy is to de- deceive us and to make us think we are alone. We're, we're doing this by ourselves. No one's ever gone before us and endured this type of injustice, whatever it may be. But that is not true. People throughout history have. They've, they've dealt with challenges, betrayal, great injustice, and yet remained faithful to God and walked through situations faithfully and seen God do good to them on the other side. Or maybe you get a mission, you get a call from God. God's telling you to do something. And maybe sometimes it's just don't hit that person. <laughs> or hold your tongue before you say that whether it's with your wife or with your kids or with the guy in the car next to you that's trying to cut you off. And the response that's needed is exact, immediate obedience. And parents, as you raise up your kids, that's one of the best lessons that you can train them in is how to obey exactly and immediately and with a happy heart because it will serve them well as they grow older because some of us have learned the hard way of what happens when you don't honor God and obey the steps that he asks us to take. I'm going to pray right now, and I just want to give you a moment as Josh comes back up. I'm going to give you a moment to consider, just look over your last week in your mind. Think about the times where you felt unjustly treated or treated unfairly. Maybe you felt the, the need to get even with somebody just want to ask you to consider, you know, in light of what we saw Joseph do, what would that mean for you to walk through this situation and instead of getting even, show mercy to the person? I'm going to pray. God, Lord, I, I just thank you for what you did through sending Jesus. God, you sent him so that we could have life, true life through him. Father, I ask for each of these people here that you would give uh, clarity in in what it is that um, you're asking them to do so that they can take that step of exact, immediate obedience. And God, I pray that as we go throughout this week, Lord, things happen with people. We're all people. We're all broken. And we offend each other. We step on each other's toes. God, I ask that you would um, put within us this heart of mercy, willingness to not get what we want and be okay with it for the sake of somebody else. And Lord, if there's anyone here that just does not know you yet, I ask, Father, that you would reveal yourself to them. Make it very clear who you are and how real you are and how much you love them. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. Um, There's still coffee in the back. We'd love to have you stick around and and chat for a little while. Um, Thanks again for being here. And Josh is going to play us on one last song and close us out.
sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Holy, holy is he. Sing a new song to him who sits on heaven's mercy seat. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. With all creation I sing praise to the King of kings. You are my everything, and I will adore you. Thank you for coming this morning. Thank you for worshiping with us and participating in the message. I hope you all have a good week this week and shine Jesus' light everywhere you go. Thank you.